Alright, so now we're going to talk about some drums. So like I said in the beginning, our goal here is to get some kind of trappy drums, kind of upbeat, bouncy drums. So we're going to do that, and we're going to look in our... Hmm, let's see what packs we got here. Pop 2020 sounds interesting. Future Pop and R&B Worldwide, though, I think is going to give us what we're looking for. I could use these loops and drag them in and stretch them, but I, uh, I would think that's, a, that's not very fun. I'm going to use some of these drums here. I might use some other ones, and we're going to make something cool. Sure, we'll throw a tom in there. That's the great part about these packs too. There's so many different uh, ready to use sounds in them. Just scroll through. And this is a good tip when you're uh, trying to make drums for, or uh, trying to sequence drums for your song. Just go through samples and whatever one you like, just put it in the project. Doesn't matter if you use it or not, per se. Just it, You just want to get as many things that inspire you, whether it's a sound or a sample or whatever, in your project, just so you can keep that inspiration going and you it's less likely, likely that you hit kind of a wall. Yeah, this one's cool. So I'm actually going to put this on Mixer Track right now. And uh, I'm going to rename this to Hat. And while I'm at it, I'm going to rename these samples too. And this is just going to keep them organized for now. We're going to keep these over here. So as you can hear, it has pan kind of left. So what we're going to do simply is just uh, kind of pan to the right. And we're going to see if that does it. Now it's more center. It's perfect. So what we do here is I'm going to start a pattern here, and the first thing I always do, with, like I said with trap comp patterns, is I go in my hat, I right click it, and I click fill each two steps. And that gives you this kind of sound. Very simple pattern, obviously we're going to make it sound a lot different, but just for now, we're going to fill out our pattern with that, and then we're going to go in there and make it kind of unique now. So. so the thing with trap hi-hats is just fill in Whatever cool rhythms you think might sound cool, they probably do sound cool. It's very hard to mess this uh, mess this part up. So we're gonna fill in some stuff. Play around with the uh, the snap a little bit, turn it off, make it different uh, settings. We copy this over. I'm going to play with our hi-hat sound now that we have a little pattern. Going to go to an EQ here. Looks like we have a little bit of loads here. You can kind of see in the EQ just a tiny bit. Uh, we'll probably never notice that, but just for mixing purposes, it's uh, always a good idea to get rid of any uh, lows in uh, like a hi-hat sound, just in case it might collide later on. And you know, then you're deep in your mix and you have no idea what's going on. Meanwhile, it's some little tiny low frequencies from your hi-hat messing everything up. Alright, so next we're going to put on a, a stereo enhancer. Or we're going to use a dimension expander. We're going to put the size to about 8% and then dry wet up a little bit. Up next, we're going to put a little reverb on it. The decay is going to be very small, like 500 milliseconds. We're going to put the size down to like 64%, and the mix is going to be at like 5. Just a little bit of depth. So you'll notice here our hi-hats are sounding a little robotic. Uh, no one really wants that. So here's a cool little trick I actually learned recently. It's a little hot key in uh, FL Studio, and that's the cool thing about FL Studio or any DAW really, is that you're no matter how long you use it, you'll always find a... Uh, a cool new little hot key or something that someone teaches you along the way. So I learned that in a pattern here, this I learned this works especially well for hi-hat patterns to give more of a natural feel. You hold Alt and then R, it brings up the randomizer. And you see here that you have a bunch of different parameters here. And if I go velocity here and I take off bipolar and I drag it down, you see it kind of drags the velocities down a little bit. And you can make it as extreme or as slight as you want. So I'll make it really extreme just for uh, the purpose of uh, it the example. So that's probably a little too extreme, like I said, so we're going to actually lower that a little bit just to give a slight low bounce, probably like halfway or right under halfway. You notice already that helps infinitely with making it sound less robotic. And next I'm going to accept that and I'm going to go to randomizer again. I'm going to lower the, it holds your settings, but if you put the uh, velocity back, obviously you see it keeps the velocity, it's just doing it again. 
So I'm going to click bipolar now, which means that if I go pan here and I drag it out, you see it's really cool. It makes our, uh, our stereo uh, feel crazy on this hi-hat pattern. So again, I'm going to make extreme just, just to show you as an example. While it does sound really cool, I just think it's better if it's uh, a little more uh, reined in. So I like that. I'm going to click accept on that. And now I'm going to go pitch here, or a note fine pitch. I'm just going to make some slight changes to the notes just to add some, uh, some variations. Just clicking some random ones here and there. Adding bass and stuff like that. And that. I'm really liking this hi hat pattern sounding. Up next, I'm going to do our snare here. It's a pretty crazy snare. I'm a big fan, though. So I'm actually going to layer the snare with another snare, I think. I'm going to put the out all the way up. Kind of lower that reverb tail a tiny bit. And I'm going to try and find some sort of clap or something to uh, mix it with. So this clap's good. Again, we're going to put the add up. Kind of lower it. So with the clap here, I'm going to go to our uh, note velocity. I'm just going to make these little off hits hit a little quieter. Just to make it, uh, again, a little more interesting. So I'm going to put these both on mixer tracks by highlighting these, going to our mixer, and then right clicking on uh, insert 10, and then going to channel routing and doing route selected channels starting from this track. Always do that one, because if you do route selected channels to this track, they're both going to go to insert 10, and we do not want that. So I'm so going to start with this clap first. I'm going to uh, EQ it a little bit. Again, you see some of this low end. We don't really want that. You could put a dimension expander on this. And actually, I'm going to show a cool little trick here that I like to use that I don't think a lot of people do. I'm actually going to load up Guitar Rig on this clap by Native Instruments. And uh, now, obviously, this plugin is made for guitars and not claps, but uh, you get some pretty cool sounds I've found. If you experiment a little bit, I'm just going to try and find something that sounds cool. So you see how cool that sounds already. We put the wet down. That's really cool. Very slight, but really cool. I'm at a reverb too. Spring reverbs are really good. So just with these three plugins, let's see what they added. Let's just take it off for a second. That clap is really underwhelming, but once we add those, just those three plugins, we have something way cooler. And layered with our snare. Go lower our hat a little bit. All right, let's listen to our drum pattern so far with our sample. Alright, up next we're going to do this kick real quick. I like this kick a lot. It just sounds like it's going to cut through. So we're going to throw in, while we're listening to our original sample, I'm going to throw in a kick here. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. So we're going to go to uh, put that on the mixer track. Basically, what we're going to do here, we're just going to slap a free compressor on it with the uh, drums preset. And as far as EQ, I really like how it sounds. I don't want to do too much. That's a that's a, a, a key, too. If you like a sample 
all these samples are made to be ready to go right out the box, so you shouldn't have to do too much mixing to it unless it's a stylistic choice and something you want to do. These samples are made to just drag them in and be able to work by default. Alright, very cool. I think we have some perks here. Yeah, so this snare here we're going to kind of use as a percussion. So, I'm going to drag this up a little bit, the pitch. I'm going to put that on a mixer track. So obviously we don't want that snare hitting like a snare, so what we're going to do here is EQ a lot of the low end out. We're gonna put a lot of reverb on it. And we're gonna lower the volume so it hits way in the background. See that just slight little texture just adds a lot to the drum loop in my opinion. Even though it's way in the background. Another one, I think we're going to edit this a little bit. Uh, one thing that's really cool in FL Studio now is they have these pre-computed effects for uh, samples. So you can just kind of boost the volume, add some cool sounds like this reverb. Gives a really unique texture. Put some stereo delay on it. Yeah, it sounds really cool. All right, so that's gonna do it for our main drum loop. Up next, we're gonna talk about building out the drive